at the different types of chemical bonds that form part of the chemistry syllabus. So there are three types of bonds that we will need to know. Firstly, when we will need to know about the metallic bond, secondly, the covalent bond, and thirdly, the ionic bond. Firstly, when we look at the metallic bond, we know it is a metal with a metal. So it's two metals bonding with each other. We know that we have positive metal kernels that are surrounded by loosely held valence electrons. Now that is indicated in our metallic model where we have our positive metal kernels and our sea of delocalized electrons indicated by our negative charges over here. And we know that a metallic bond conducts electricity due to the presence of free electrons. So as we see over here, we have, this is simply a zoomed in image of our metallic model where we have, so we have our positive kernel here and our second positive kernel here, and we have atoms that overlap. They are tightly packed and our valence electrons indicated by our small, our small circles over here are, att are attracted by different atoms, causing them to become loose. So this atom over here with the positive kernel over here, this valence electron will be attracted by this positive kernel and then will may be attracted by this positive kernel over here. And in that way, the close packing of each atom means that the electrons are attracted by different atoms at different times. And this gives them the free nature that they are able to move around the, the metal and in between the different atoms. Therefore, we call them free valence electrons and we therefore know them as a sea of delocalized electrons they are delocalized from their their atom and they are attracted by different atoms at different times then we move on to the covalent bond so a, co a covalent bond is between a non-metal and a non-metal so two non-metal substances that bond together will form a, co a covalent bond so there's at least one pair of valence electrons that are shared by overlapping of outer energy levels. And we will look at that just now when we look at a diagram of how a covalent bond forms. And we know that a covalent bond forms a molecule. And thirdly, we look at ionic bonds. So an ionic bond is between a metal and a non-metal atom. We have oppositely charged ions that are attracted to each other by strong electrostatic forces. And unlike a covalent bond, which forms a molecule, an ionic bond forms a compound. And it's good to know that atoms bond to enter into, into a lower energy state where they are more stable. So that is why we will have atoms that bond together so that they enter into a more stable state. Diagrams that represent each of the bonds. And you may be asked to draw in an exam or in a test, you may be asked to draw a Lewis diagram indicating an ionic or a covalent bond. And this is how you would do that. So if we had Na sodium, which has a valence, a one valence electron, and we had chlorine, which has two, four, six, seven valence electrons, they will bond ionically as shown over here. Your one electron on your sodium will move to your chlorine, giving it eight valence electrons and giving it a one minus charge, and your Na will have a one plus charge. And therefore, there will be an electrostatic force between your Na and your Cl, and therefore you will form NaCl. You mustn't forget that this is a compound. You will form a compound of NaCl, which is sodium chloride, and remember your oppositely charged ions, as you said, Na is now positively charged by one plus and our Cl is now negatively charged by one minus because we have an extra electron and here we have a deficiency of one electron. Now there's a strong electrostatic force between the two that causes a bond. Then we look at a covalent bond. If you had Cl and Cl, which we know has seven valence electrons and seven valence electrons, we know that in order for these to enter into a stable state, they need eight valence electrons so that their outer shell is full. So therefore, we will have a bond as shown here. We will have a sharing of one pair of outer valence electrons, as we show over here. And in this way, we form Cl2, which is chlorine. Um, so when we look at a covalent bond, 
we must remember that it forms a molecule, so it would be a chlorine molecule. Now, as we've said, at least one pair of valence electrons are shared by overlapping of outer energy levels. We see that over here, this, mo this um, molecule over here shares a electron with this molecule over here, forming a chlorine molecule. Here we look at the bonding between hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, and we see that we form HCN molecule, and we see that there's a sharing between our H and our C, as we can see over here. Remember that H only needs two valence electrons to become stable. Its outer shell can only house two valence electrons. And between our C and our N, we have a sharing of three pairs of valence electrons, and therefore we form a covalent bond and an HCN molecule. We look at oxygen and carbon and another oxygen atom. We have a sharing of two valence electron pairs between the carbon and each oxygen. And in this way, we form a covalent bond between carbon and oxygen to form a CO2 molecule. Now, most importantly, we must always remember that our ionic bond, we will have a movement of electrons from one atom to another, and therefore an electrostatic force between two oppositely charged atoms. Whereas with a covalent bond, there is no movement of electrons, only a sharing of one or more pairs of valence electrons, which leads to the formation of a covalent bond.